<laughs> I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> I swallowed that too quick. Like my mug. This is the Hoof GP and I've been off for two weeks straight almost. This is my first day back and you're coming along for the ride. This should be a good one guys. Welcome to the herd. So you heard me right, I've been off work for nearly two weeks straight ill. Craig has been off work for two and a half weeks and he's off for another week to come. He's actually on holiday now though. So wishing Craig well that he returns joyful and glad to be back at work. Today, we're on our way to The Loves, a little farm that I absolutely love going to, no pun intended. They have a beautiful little kind of pasteurizing plant. They serve milkshakes. They have an awesome, awesome herd of Frisian cows and I've been going to them for years and years in years. Kia's coming along for the ride? Yep. I think we've only got about 20 cows to do, so it shouldn't be too tough a day. It really shouldn't be. Look at my flags, by the way. Everybody's asking for flag updates. Look at them. They're everywhere. All the way around the building. I still got more to put up, and I think we're going to put them on the ceiling, believe it or not. Kind of dress it up, you know, make it look good. Anyway, all we've got to do is unplug the crush and head on out. By the way, not a lot of people know this. The KVK is actually powered by batteries, which means we need to make sure it's plugged in every single night so that the batteries are fully charged. We also leave it plugged in while we're working because that trickle feeds the batteries. Which means we need to remember to unplug it because believe it or not, that's something we forget quite regularly. So Craig's job is usually to check everything is stocked up and we're all good and ready to go. But this time, I just need to crack on and get it done myself and stop being so lazy. I told you to wait till I'd finished seeing the, seeing the bit. Oh, spill the coffee. I can't believe I've just done that. So normally that's lower down. <laughs> that's the second time that's happened. Never mind, the cows are more important. Let's get going. Hey now, look into my eyes. You can use them as a mirror, baby. You're my ticket to paradise. Just like that, we are here. I like it here. Hi! As soon as I get to any farm, it's a race to get set up. I just want the crush in position, my grinders hanging where they should be, and the race all ready to collect some cows. So we get the KVK off the back of the Eye for Williams trailer, roll her into position, and that's us just about ready for cows. So let's go and get them. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There couldn't be a case where the phrase many hands make light work could be more appropriate. Cows don't know what we want them to do, and they want to be back in the herd with the rest of their friends. So the more people on deck, the easier these things go. Anyway, we've got a cow in the crush, so let's do exactly what we're here to do and get all of these feet leveled up and looking sexy. These cows may look the same as the majority of the cows that are on my channel, but I can assure you there is a big difference. These are not Holstein Frisian cows. These are Frisian cows. And Frisian cows have a higher body condition score. In other words, they have more fat throughout their body. They're smaller, lighter cows. 
Their frame is not as extreme as Holstein cows are and all of that adds up to meaning that usually they have better than average feet. And that is true of Andy's cows. There is very little wrong with these cows, they just need a little bit of a trim up, a bit of a shape and a little TLC. Although they do have fewer problems, they don't completely escape them altogether. And this next cow, cow 85, certainly did. She appeared on national TV and you're just about to see why. I truly love how Kier shows an interest and is actually learning how cow's feet should look. Anyway, I said that this cow appeared on national television, and looking at this foot, you'd struggle to wonder why. But here's a clip from the BBC show This Farming Life, which the loves featured on a few months ago. One cow is causing particular concern. There's one name on there, 85. 85. If you don't look after them, they'll look after you. Luckily, help is on its way. Dr. Graham Parker's unusual specialism has won him nearly two million followers online. Come on, girls, hop up. We're here to hopefully make sure that Andy's cows are all perfect, but they usually are, to be fair, so they don't need much work, but don't tell him that. Next up is number 85, the cow Andy's most worried about. See, this cow's got a really sore foot and an abscess is formed right in here, so she'll be really lame, will yeah, she? Yeah, she's lame now, yep. Yeah, so she's really lame. The block relieves the pressure. She's very satisfied. When you know that she's lame and there's a problem and you see the poison coming out, you think, oh, well, that'll be the issue sorted then, hopefully. But what I've done is I've removed the top horn and she's got a layer or a pocket of congealed pus and blood inside that pocket and it's building up pressure. And she's got that because she had a problem and her immune system's trying to fix it. We're going to bandage it up and she should feel a lot, lot better. I absolutely love it, yeah. <laughs> It seems strange, doesn't it, <laughs> to enjoy being at the wrong end of a cow all day. But cows like this, you make them more comfortable. But then when you go to a cow like cow 85, she was in pain 20 minutes ago. But in a week or two, she'll be back to full health and it's really rewarding. It's nice to see them. They go in limping and they come out not limping as much. So that was then and this is now. As you can see, there are no obvious problems. But it won't be until we model out these typical soul ulcer sites that we know whether she's fixed. What do you or think, not. yeah? Perfect. Yeah. Just down the like that. You know she had a big ulcer there last time? Did she? Yep. There. You sound surprised. It's right there. You can see there's a wee bit there. Imagine being able to share the job you love with the world you live in. I count myself as very lucky. So there you have it. This back left foot of cow 85's couldn't be much more perfect than it is right now. However, the same, unfortunately, can't be said for her front right foot. Doesn't it actually bother me, stuff like that? If it did, I wouldn't do what I do. <laughs>
When I'm on farm working in a group of people, we're constantly talking about our lives away from work. But more often than not, the conversation quickly turns back to the job in hand, and Cow85 also has a stone stuck in this front right foot. I can't even get it out. No, it's not that big, but it's just well stuck in. Usually, getting the stone out of the foot is only the beginning of the job. It's the aftermath that is the real worry, and that is definitely the case with this hoof. You can clearly see that the puncture wound the stone has caused is overrun. There's overburdening hoof horn and a cavity underneath, and we need to remove all of that problematic horn. And as luck would have it, Cow85 has had a lucky escape. The puncture wound has not gone all the way through to the corium, and this simple trim will put her all the way back to full so comfort. Over the whole heel though, take pressure off that area because it would be slightly tender. Lovely. As you can see, the whole family is out in force. We have grannies, granddads, nieces and nephews, and I, for one, absolutely love that we're in the mix. So this is an interesting one. The vet was in the other day and this cow was walking uncomfortably, I would assume, because she had tylomas, which are big growths in between her feet. Now, I'm not allowed to remove them because I can't cut into live flesh, but the vet can. And if they do do it, it can be fantastic for the cows. And in this case, it really has been. If you look in there, it's quite hard to see, but it's still open because it was just done the other day. She would have had a big growth all the way down there, filling up this cavity. And it would have been seriously sore for her to walk on. And exactly the same on the other foot is true. This has been a successful operation for this cow. We're just going to clean it up, tidy it up, make sure she's comfortable on her actual hoofs and let her go. These tylomas, or growths, have lots of different names, like granuloma and hyperplasia, but at the end of the day, they are all very similar. They are growths, causing real pain and discomfort for these cows, and they can happen in different ways. They can be hereditary, so passed on from the mother or father of the cow, or they can actually come about through an infection like digital dermatitis, which causes hypergrowth, i.e. hyperplasia. Either way, the vet can treat them very successfully, and in cases like this, when it works out fantastically, it's the best option. I'll just try and widen this bit so that it stays clean in there. Modelling out the interdigital space like I've just done will help to reduce dirt and debris that builds up in there. It'll also help air get to the wound and keep the area much cleaner, so hopefully it will completely recover. I don't know what life is like where you live, but here in Wigtonshire in South West Scotland, everybody knows everybody. I've known the people I work with for years upon years upon years. I work with a lot of friends and I work with a lot of family. So going to work is a complete pleasure for me. It really is. I feel like part of the team and we've got lots to talk about because there's history at every corner. So when I'm working away trimming cow's feet, I feel completely at ease and in my happy place.
a day. I'll be honest, it's been a tough first day back. The cows haven't wanted to go in today. Clever editing has made it look like it was easy. So we're actually at the Loves Farm, which is called Bridge of Aird Farm here in Stranraer. And they produce their own milk. Well, obviously they produce their own milk, but they sell their own milk as well. And Milkshake and Kaylee just nipped away to get us one. Look, love milk. Clever, huh? See what they did there? So this milk came straight from that cow. Probably. Which is pretty awesome. Like a lot of farmers around the world struggle with milk prices because they're pretty low compared to what it takes to actually produce milk. So the loves are going back to the kind of old way and selling their own milk directly to the public. So if you're anywhere near Stranraer, pop into the wee aired, get yourself an awesome milkshake. This one's chocolate, obviously.